And them dollars made my spidey sense a ring a ring ring And that booty on that thought he made me spring a spring spring Then I took her to my pad, made her sing a sing sing First she asked me for a thing, now she cling it cling cling And she's bossy, but she threw it Oh you hella saucy, did you stew it? Wonder what it cost me I threw some shoes in, ice be on my body I'm never bruising, hey Yeah, four flights, one month Bitch, I'm from the future, catch this baby going beast mode She hit me with the nudie, with the nail class Find me triple stepping on my scooty Suck your head, man, cause you know your mommy is my tutor I'm a tall man, why's he Trying to get me tall, man. Rubber band, man. Can you toss it up? Let the rain, man. Rain dance. Take another air with the goofy thought. No chance. Love getting money. Call it romance. Hey, sussy boys. Are you hungry? I see you trying to buy my sound, but it sounded kind of funky. So <laughs> what you just saw was an intro I made almost two weeks ago for a traditional sort of exposed video on James Charles after I and the rest of the internet decided to take the words of Toddy Westbrook at face value and cancel the man of the hour. I mean, just about everyone, including myself, was taking turns dunking on this guy. Uh... Meow? The stakes had become high enough to where he was bleeding subs at an unprecedented rate, making the situation beyond ridiculous and thus easy to mock. Hi all, James here. Um, I'm currently traveling abroad and just woke up, but I wanted to sit down and make a video addressing everything that's going on right now. Now, it's true people have been looking for a reason to hate James Charles for a long time now. And the fact that this happened fresh off the heels of the $500 per ticket controversy only added more fuel to an already sizzling dumpster fire, leading to the most insane week I've seen on YouTube since the Leafy era. Daniel. And on YouTube, because Daniel. Keemstar at that time was Daniel, a bad can I fucking business respond decision. to your fucking so one you of your points? So you made a good business decision. But in can the I end, you fucked up. You didn't see the long can I fucking you even no talk, idea. I mean, in the span of one week, we've gone from hating James to standing Toddy to hating Jeffrey to hating Toddy and then to supporting James again. And it's just amazing how fickle the court of public opinion can be. But for the 1.6% of my audience who is apparently 65 or older, which, uh, thanks, I guess, you may not know what I'm referring to. Or even if you do, you might not be completely familiar with the James Charles controversy. And that's okay. It's only been slightly hard to follow. But while you're here, I may as well catch you up to speed. James Charles is easily one of, if not the most influential member of the YouTube beauty community. After his CoverGirl appearance launched him into the public eye, his channel was gaining millions of subs by the week. By joining the sister squad with Emma Chamberlain and the Dolan twins in 2018, his popularity skyrocketed to record-breaking heights, releasing his own palette in November of last year, and even having the opportunity to help Kylie Jenner with her Halloween makeup, which quickly became the most viewed video on his entire channel, which is really saying something. At just 19 years old, wait, he he's 19? I'm 19. This guy's making millions of dollars sitting in front of a ring light while I'm using Chick-fil-A receipts as Kleenex? Where's my Met Gala invitation? Where's my $75 merch? Oh god, what if you're about to have sex and you find out he's wearing sister's boxers? Yeah, I, I don't even know what else to say. It's not like it's hard to make fun of James Charles. <laughs> But at the same time, the criticism he's been receiving as of late is unlike anything I've ever seen before. So how has it all started? Well, that's where our friend Toddy comes in. Toddy Westbrook is another prominent beauty channel and entrepreneur who's sitting at a cool 6 million subs before this drama went down. But after her video, Bye Sister, broke the internet with all sorts of damning claims, she gained around 4 million subscribers at the same time James lost 3 million. To give you an idea of how monumental Monumental, that is, we had mainstream news outlets reporting on YouTube beauty gossip. Now, with the drama playing out on YouTube right now, it involves a beauty influencer named James Charles. You may not have heard of him. I guarantee if you have teenage girls, they have heard of him. Oh, yeah. That's why Amy and I are doing this story. <laughs> right now, we've both been... I swear to God, I'm in the Twilight Zone, man. Toddy made a multitude of assertions in her video. Not only that James Charles was an immature, naive kid, which I'm sure he is, but that he would also impose his celebrity status on others to get what he wanted, being blatantly manipulative to all sorts of straight men in exchange for sexual favors, even if they weren't particularly welcomed. That he harassed a straight waiter at her birthday dinner 
there in Seattle and that although she had told him many a time this would eventually get him into trouble, he continued this manipulative pattern of behavior. Why she decided to expose this to the public rather than handle it in private, I have no idea. But I have a feeling it had something to do with the vitamins. I also want to give a quick shout out to Sugar Bear Hair. I met their team weekend one at Coachella and they really helped me and my friends out with sister security because it was crazy. Um, you guys probably already know about their iconic hair vitamins. Days prior, James had promoted one of Toddy's rival brands on Instagram, which uh, she was not too happy about. I'm stressed out and I feel really lost and I feel in my community especially like I feel really lonely. Whether or not this all hinges on the fact that he didn't plug her vitamins enough, I have no idea. I don't think that could have been the driving force because it is just too minuscule for something this grandiose, but it does seem to at least be a factor to me. I've heard her vitamins are a little sketch anyway, so who knows. Bottom line, James retaliated a week later with his own video where he actually showed receipts and evidence to prove he was in the right, exhibiting to everyone that the waiter was indeed by and basically disputing any predatory claims made by a certain someone a few days earlier. So that's that, right? All's well that ends well, we can finally move on and forget about it, right? Well, no. I mean, we shouldn't just sweep it under the rug like nothing happened. This show was more entertaining than the last season of Game of Thrones. And that's not even a joke! Oh, fuck! Um... See, I've noticed a lot of people pinning the blame on Tati, which is partially justified in my opinion. I don't think she blatantly lied about what happened. She would have no reason to, assuming she knew James had the receipts. Maybe I'm naive, but I just have a hard time believing this woman meant to intentionally sabotage a 19-year-old's entire career. I know a lot of people People are not gonna understand a lot of people think this is fake or that they think that there was this like big agenda or anything and not. But that doesn't mean she shouldn't be held accountable for the onslaught of bizarre accusations that stemmed from her video. We were quick to jump on the James Charles hate train because we all viewed Tati as someone we could trust. She came across extremely genuine in both of her videos, at least to most people. It's not like the evidence was stacked against her either. Forced us into a relationship and now we're here for this video today. Please all touch right. me all over. Okay. Paint you like a French girl. You did flirt with me in that video. I'm just being sarcastic mm, though. No. What are three qualities that you would look for in a long-term relationship? You gotta have a good sense of humor. Yeah. That's the most important. You tell me I'm funny to every single DM I send you? Yeah, okay, second one, you, you have to be a woman. You just gotta have some sort of ambition. Yeah. You gotta want I have ambition. Things. But once it came out that Tati exaggerated most of what happened and that James was nowhere near as toxic as everyone thought, the entire narrative was flipped on its head and people came for Tati's throat next. Then Jeffrey, who quickly backed off once the knives got close to his throat, all it proves is that public support can falter at the drop of a hat and that we as a collective are just as responsible for James's collapse as Tati because we let it happen. In its purest form, a cancel culture is a disease that masquerades under the guise of activism and preys on the minds of the ignorant. Fueled by impulse and blind outrage, it discounts the idea that a person has the capacity to change, which is among the most dangerous notions any individual can subscribe to. I've been wanting to talk about cancel culture for so long now, and this past incident has been a perfect example of why we shouldn't be going out of our way to ruin the life of someone who may not even be guilty of the things they're accused of. In this case, there were so many different narratives spinning around that it was like a giant game of telephone that got wildly out of control. It wasn't until James's final video that all the gaps began to fill and things started to make more sense. But the internet didn't hesitate to banish the man himself for being a creepy, manipulative, predatory rapist? Really? That was a thing? We as a culture have become so quick to judge situations as either black or white without considering the nuances or waiting for any of the additional facts to roll in. And I say we because I know for a fact I've been complicit in this behavior before. For me to say otherwise would just be dishonest. I'm not above it. And I'd be willing to bet neither are you. Nowadays, information spreads so quickly that it is painfully alluring to simply take someone's initial word at face value without even 
even giving it a second thought. And that is beyond dangerous because it can lead to real life consequences that can often affect a person's entire career, sometimes permanently. As humans, we have a natural inclination to be tribalistic. There is a legitimate power in numbers, and when massive droves of people are judging your character in front of the entire world for millions of fans to see, it can lead to catastrophic results and dogpiling. Hence James losing 3 million subscribers over the course of a few days. I'd be willing to bet a good chunk of those people didn't even know what was going on and just used the most popular accusations as proof. And because rumors and half-truths are so easily permeated through satire and memes, it just devolves into an almost uncontrollable cycle of bullshit that may or may not hold gravitas on a person's reputation. That is truly scary when you think about it. Because cancel culture doesn't dictate whether or not you're in the wrong. It's already established that you're unworthy of redemption. <laughs> who do you think you are? Someone who can learn from their past mistakes and take steps to change for the better? <laughs> It's important to acknowledge the difference between canceling someone and speaking out against genuinely harmful behavior. I've made videos on people who I felt have done wrong. Take my Bud A video for example. I was bringing attention to a man who I believed was in the wrong for making unwanted sexual advances towards underage girls through TikTok. That's not the same as me canceling him. His actions may have been irredeemable. There's no excuse for the things he did. But that doesn't mean he shouldn't be taking steps to vindication. Canceling is when you don't believe the person should or can change at all, and that their past mistakes now define them as an individual for the rest of their lives. I can't even put into words how backwards that is. A person may do something irredeemable, but that doesn't make the person irredeemable. Hopefully that makes sense, I don't know. A good example of this would be the James Gunn controversy from last year. Conservative media pundit and man who falsely connected child sex ring to pizza restaurant Mike Cernovich created quite the stir when he dug up up the past tweets of Marvel director James Gunn in an attempt to smear him as a pedophile. Albeit heinous, the tweets themselves were jokes, and although there is no excuse for the things he said, it's impossible to deny that Gunn had changed drastically as an individual and no longer stood by the inappropriate things he wrote 10 years prior. That wasn't enough for Cernovich though, as he proceeded to lead an entire hate campaign that subsequently ended in Gunn losing his spot as director of the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy sequel, shunning him from the internet for a pretty long time. Now luckily enough people were outraged that Marvel eventually gave his job back, but not until the hate campaign had forgotten about everything and moved on to their next victim. Cancel culture is so phenomenally capricious that it only lingers for so long before people eventually get bored and target someone else. It's just so stupid. The grand irony of cancel culture is that it usually doesn't silence anyone. In fact, it usually has the opposite effect, if anything. Everyone trying to cancel James Charles failed because all it did was get his name trending on Twitter. By making a big deal of canceling someone, you're only giving them more relevance. Whether the attention is negative or positive, the spotlight stays on that individual, so you don't really censor anything. You just spread more hate and cause the person's life to be a living hell. Now all of a sudden, the fans that were once rallying behind your every move have now turned on you and are sending you death threats, all because you're now canceled and somehow void of redemption. And it's getting more and more ridiculous all the time. Jake Paul just tried to cancel Cody Ko for being a cyber bully, which is laughable because Cody is a comedian and Jake exploits children for money. So you tell me which one's in the wrong. Come in what? Nicer? Come in nicer, dude. You don't care You're about- You're cyber bullies kids, bro. Kids? You're, You're cyber kids. Kids, kids, bro. I don't like that. Which kids? I don't like cyber bullies and you're a cyber bully. Sorry, man. Hey, man. You said sorry. That's good. Yeah. I'm sorry for bullying you. If we were in the business of canceling people for being assholes, we would have gotten rid of cancel culture a long time ago. I'm not defending anything James Charles may have done. I mean, he's a 19-year-old millionaire. He can't be that great of a person. This is enough cardio for me. I'm literally hot. <laughs> But at the end of the day, he doesn't deserve such baseless attacks over rumors and exaggerated claims that have been heavily amplified and twisted through multiple parties. Whether or not he's a good person is another debate, but there's no question James Charles has been unjustly chewed up and spit out by the internet canceling machine. I'm glad he was able to defend himself, but at the same time, the damage has already been done, and now it's only a question as to how this will affect his career going forward. If anything, I hope we can all take a step back and actually get an idea of the 
the damage brought on by canceling someone. I believe that just about anyone has the ability to change, and to assert otherwise is some of the most regressive, unproductive rhetoric I've ever heard. I mean, if we're gonna cancel him for anything, let it be these tweets. These are just inhumane.